A tectonic shift is underway in the skies. Canada and Europe are drawing a line in the sand, declaring their intent to forge a path to military self-sufficiency, breaking free from the gravitational pull of U.S. technology. In Ottawa, the roar of the F-35 deal is being challenged, as Parliament re-evaluates its commitment, while a surge of national ambition fuels the rise of homegrown military innovation. Be prepared, because we plunge into the heart of this aerial rivalry. Prior to the billion F-35 project assigned, the McDonnell Douglas CF-18 Hornet has been the backbone of the Royal Canadian Air Force, or RCAF. It stands as Canada's sole fighter aircraft, underscoring its critical role in the nation's defence strategy. This multi-role aircraft is designed for a variety of missions, including air superiority, ground attack, and reconnaissance. The CF-18 is powered by two General Electric F404 engines, giving it a top speed of approximately Mach 1.8 and a combat range of about 1,000 nautical miles. It features a 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon and can carry a variety of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground munitions. Although the CF-18s have been modernized over the years with upgrades to avionics, radar, and weapon systems, they are nearing the end of their operational lifespan. Hence, Canada has agreed to a contract to purchase F-35 fighter jets worth 19 billion Canadian dollars or 13.2 billion dollars in 2024. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II represents the future of air combat for Canada and many allied nations. Unlike the CF-18, which is a fourth generation fighter, the F-35 is a fifth-generation stealth multi-role aircraft, offering significantly enhanced capabilities. One of the most notable differences is stealth technology. The F-35 is designed with radar-absorbing materials and an advanced shape that significantly reduces its radar signature, making it much harder to detect and track compared to the CF-18. This gives it a major advantage in contested airspace. Performance-wise, the F-35 is powered by a single Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine, capable of reaching speeds of Mach 1.6. While slightly slower than the CF-18, the F-35 compensates with superior sensor fusion, advanced electronic warfare capabilities, and unparalleled situational awareness. Its integrated avionics allow pilots to detect and engage threats well before they are detected themselves. Both aircraft are designed for multi-role operations, but the F-35's advanced technology gives it a significant edge. The CF-18 carries a mix of AIM-9 Sidewinder and AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles for air combat, along with precision-guided bombs and ground attack missiles. The F-35, on the other hand, can carry a similar array of weapons, but benefits from internal weapons bays, preserving its stealth characteristics it can also integrate next-generation weapons, such as the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile and other classified systems. One of the biggest concerns surrounding the F-35 is cost. Each F-35 costs significantly more than a CF-18, with procurement costs around $80 million per jet. Additionally, operating the F-35 is more expensive, with higher maintenance and sustainment costs compared to the CF-18. However, these costs come with significant advancements in survivability, lethality, and mission effectiveness. Beyond cost, the CF-18 has a proven combat record. The aircraft saw action during the Gulf War in 1991, where Canadian CF-18s were deployed as part of the US-led coalition to liberate Kuwait. Canadian pilots conducted air-to-ground strike missions against Iraqi positions, proving the aircraft's reliability in combat. The CF-18s also played a role in NATO's intervention in the Balkans during the 1990s, conducting precision airstrikes in Kosovo. More recently, they were deployed in Libya in 2011 as part of Operation Unified Protector, 
enforcing a no-fly zone and striking military targets. While the CF-18 has demonstrated its effectiveness in combat, it is increasingly outmatched by modern threats. The shift to the F-35 ensures that Canada maintains a cutting-edge fighter jet capable of operating in high-threat environments. This project initially went smoothly. Unfortunately, the political and economic turbulence surrounding the Trump administration, coupled with increasing calls within Canada for more autonomous defense capabilities, has spurred the search for alternatives. The notion of reducing Canada's reliance on foreign military technologies could lead the country to investigate options such as the French Rafale, Sweden's Gripen, or even pursuing indigenous development projects. The Swedish Saab Gripen fighter jet has long been regarded as a possible alternative to the F-35 for Canada. With Canada's existing defense relationships with European countries, including Sweden, the Gripen could align with Canada's strategic vision of fostering closer ties with NATO allies outside the US. The Gripen is also designed to be a highly cost-effective solution for countries seeking a versatile and efficient platform for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. Its advanced avionics, combined with operational flexibility and the ability to operate from austere environments, make it an ideal candidate for Canada's diverse defense needs. Another option under consideration is the French Dassault Rafale, a multi-role fighter jet used by several countries around the world. Its ability to perform a wide range of missions from air superiority to strike and reconnaissance makes it an attractive alternative. France's military industry has a history of working closely with Canada, which may facilitate smoother negotiations for potential integration into the Canadian Armed Forces. The Rafale's proven combat performance in various theaters, including its deployment in the Middle East and Africa, demonstrates its reliability in real-world combat conditions. Its combination of advanced radar, sensor systems, and multi-role capabilities positions it as a highly capable platform for a wide range of operations. Ultimately, this transition highlights the evolution of air combat technology. The move ensures that Canada remains equipped with cutting-edge air power for decades to come. That's today's wrap. See you for the next update.